Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I want to talk to you today about not complaining. The title of my message is Stop Complaining. Now, let me say something, and I'm very sincere when I say this. This is obviously not the first time in my life I've taught on not complaining, but at the beginning of this year, I felt like that God spoke something to me, and I really believe that he wants me to share this with people. I was just sitting one morning and praying, and I felt like the Lord said to me, if you're going to complain about something, don't bother to pray about it. So I want to just let that settle there for a minute. <laughs> If you're going to complain about something, don't bother to pray about it. You know, God is not in charge of complaints. He doesn't answer complaints. He answers prayers of faith. So when we pray, if we really believe that God heard us, and that he's working on the situation that we can expect change, then there really should be no reason to complain after that. Amen? Amen. And I actually believe, and I don't, I don't say this kind of thing loosely, you know. I, I hope and pray and believe that when I preach, I'm bringing a word from God. But I think that there are certain words from God that... We need to really perk up and say, God's really saying something. And although this is very simple, I really believe that God is showing me and that he wants me to get across to you that all the complaining that's going on in the world today, and how many of you know the world is just full of complaining? I mean, it's just like, just everywhere you go, it's just complaining, complaining, complaining. Complaining, complaining. And I think that it is hurting our society more than what we can even imagine. I think it's hurting families. I think it's hurting the church. And if anybody should not be complaining, it should be Christians who are not complaining. And I believe that the antidote for complaining is being more aggressive in thanksgiving and gratitude. So I want to share with you a little exercise that I think that you can do at any time. I've been doing this, and I'm finding it very refreshing. And that is simply to stop several times a day and just say, Lord, I want to just live this moment that I'm in. You know, so often we don't, we're breathing, but we're not really living the moment that we're in. We're, we're in such a frustrated uproar over all the things that are going on in our lives that so much of our day just flies by and at night we don't even really know what we did but we know it was pretty frustrating and we didn't enjoy all that much of the day and I think it's a very good exercise to stop several times a day and just say now Lord I'm going to enter into this moment and really just live this moment and to think about And to tell God what you're thankful for at that particular moment in your life. I did that this morning when I got up. I've done it once since then. And so when I think about what I'm thankful for right now, and I mean, I could go off on a thousand different things. But if I think about what I'm thankful for right now, you know, I'm thankful to be here today. But I'm also thankful that you're here today because I have done this I remember a meeting that I did when my ministry was just getting off the ground where there were only nine people there and I brought five of them with me. <laughs> so I'm just really grateful that you're here today because it would not be very much fun at all if I was here and you weren't here. <laughs> Amen. And you should be grateful to be here today because there are so many people that are home depressed and getting over hangovers and fighting with somebody, and you're not one of them this morning. You're here in the house of God. I'm grateful to be here in this beautiful building today because I've preached in places that were not this good looking. 
I remember preaching in places, banquet rooms, and every kind of little meeting room that you can find, and literally our team having to go in and clean up the banquet chicken from the night before off the floor so we could preach. And I remember God telling me in the very, very beginning of our ministry, if you can not complain about where you go to do meetings, the day will come when you'll be able to go anywhere you want to and hold a meeting. Well, that's pretty much true today. But I had to go through a lot of rough places and difficult places. And I think a lot of people, and I want you to listen to me, a lot of people never get to where they want to be because they'll never stop complaining about where they're at. I'm going to say it again. A lot of people will never get to where they want to be because they will never stop complaining about where they're at. The word complain means to remain or to stay overnight. So if you want to stay right where you're at, just keep complaining about it, and I can pretty much guarantee you that you'll still be there this time next year. But if you want to get raised out of that situation, then start praising God. When you praise, you're raised. When you complain, you remain. Come on, give God a little praise. Now, the easiest thing in the world to do is complain. You don't have to try to. Our flesh, we all have one, and we're going to have one until Jesus comes back, must be disciplined by walking in the Spirit. And the flesh does not like to be uncomfortable or interrupted or inconvenienced in any way. <laughs> and the moment that it is, you're going to have some facial expression, some body language, some emotion is going to rise up. And I just think that God wants us to startle the world, to shock the world by being a body of people that don't complain and murmur and find fault, but actually are really grateful and thankful for every little thing that we can find to be grateful and thankful for. I wish, well, I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe, because wishing don't do much good, so. I'm going to believe that you're going to get this today. And that you're going to study this on your own. I know we hear a lot about being thankful, but I believe that we can have thank power in our life. I think that being thankful is powerful. And I'm very concerned about all the murmuring, grumbling, and complaining that's going on in the world today. So many people are complaining about the government. Well, whatever you think, there are obviously problems that sometimes need to be discussed and we need to confront them and do something about them. But you know what? Complaining doesn't change anything. It does not change anything. All it does is just make the devil happy. And he's just like, yeah, go ahead, you silly people. Just complain, 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 and don't do anything about it. And that's what people do. They complain, but they don't do a thing to change it. Let me tell you something that I find interesting. Habakkuk had a complaint. The Bible says that he went to God with his complaint. And you know what God said to him? Get a vision and write it down so plainly that everybody who passes by might be able to read it. So I love that. Here's a prophet of God who had a complaint went to God with his complaint, and God said, get a vision. We don't need a complaint, we need a vision. And we don't need to be complaining about our government, our nation. What we need to do is get a vision to stand up and be the way that we should be and believe that God can use us to make a difference. Martin Luther had a complaint about racism, but he had a vision to change it. Amen? It won't do you any good to complain about all your debt. Get a vision to get out of debt. Ooh, this is good. 
It won't do you any good to complain about what you think is your bad marriage. Get a vision. Pray. Ask God, what can I do to make this better? Is there something that you can do through me to make this better? You see this passivity and inactivity of just sitting around and complaining about everything that's going wrong is only compounding the problem. It is not making anything any better. It takes energy to complain. But it drains you. It sucks the life right out of you. There's many things that I'm thankful for right now. I'm thankful that I don't have a headache today because for 10 years I preached when I had migraine headaches. Nobody didn't know that. I didn't have one every time I got up to preach. But many times while I was preaching, I would feel like I had a knife sticking in my eye. I'm grateful today that my back is not hurting. Because I've had back issues in my life, and a couple of years ago, I had a spell where my back was hurting really, really bad for four months, and nobody knew it, but I would stand and preach, and, and by the time I'd get off the platform, I could barely move. And I'm grateful that I don't have a headache today, and I don't have a backache today. <laughs> Amen? I'm grateful that I don't look as old as I am. <laughs> Woo! That's big. Hallelujah. I'm grateful that at my age, God's given me the grace to go to the gym and work out with weights three times a week. You ought to see the muscle this girl's got. Check that out. Woo, hallelujah. I still shop in the young ladies department. I don't, you know, there's a line when you go to the store. There's, a, there's a, an area you start to float into where everything gets to looking boxy, and that's the older people's department. I don't go in there. I stay over here where it's still got a little curve. <laughs> I'm grateful that I get to go home today because I haven't been home in two weeks. I'm looking forward to seeing my dog. I'm grateful for so many things. And I intend when I get on the plane this afternoon to just have another little moment with God and say, now what am I thankful for right now? I think if we'll be more aggressive and actually taking several times a day and saying, God, what am I thankful for right now? You can capture that moment. You can own that moment. And you'll be amazed at how it's going to cheer you up if you'll do that. Is anybody getting what I'm saying today? You know, there's not a person in here today that doesn't have something to be thankful for. I'm thankful this morning when I got up, I said, God, I am thankful that I can walk and talk and see and hear. Wow. How amazing that is. Philippians 4, 6. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. So that includes your thing. But in every circumstance and in everything... <laughs> By prayer and petition, definite request with thanksgiving. Continue to make your wants known to God. This doesn't say, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition with complaining. I think that when we are not thankful. And you know, we can say, well, I'm a, I'm a thankful person, but the Bible says, be thankful and say so. Be thankful and say so. I think that we actually quench the Holy Spirit. I think that we hinder the beautiful, wonderful, powerful Holy Spirit from being able to do what He really wants to do in our life just through complaining. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 19. Is this something anybody can use today? I'm not saying that you don't have something to complain about. I'm just saying it won't do any good. So there's really no point in wasting our energy any longer. You know, you've got a certain amount of energy for life. I believe that God showed me this one time. that you, Everybody has got a certain amount of energy assigned to them for their life. And if you waste it on goofy stuff, then you don't have the energy that you need for the real things that God has called you to do. And I'm all about conserving all the energy that I can so I can do what I'm doing for God as long as I possibly can. I don't have any more energy to waste being mad. It takes a lot of energy to get mad. I mean, a real good two or three day emotional fit just can wear you out. 
and I just don't have the time for that anymore. I don't have the time to get upset every time some little something happens in my life that I'm not expecting, because life is full of that stuff. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 19. Be happy in your faith and rejoice and be glad hearted continually. Now notice it doesn't say feel happy, feel glad. It says be happy, be glad. You know, you don't have to feel something to be something. I don't have to feel confident to be confident. I can know that I'm confident. I don't have to feel like loving people and being good to them to be loving and to be kind. One of the biggest problems we have is we wait to feel like doing everything, and we don't have to do that. We can be what God has encouraged us to be through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can live on the other side of our feeling. <laughs> be unceasing in prayer, praying perseveringly. Learn how to pray your way through the day. Let prayer be just like breathing. It just weaves in and out of your life. Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances may be. Be thankful and give thanks, for this is the will of God for you who are in Christ Jesus, the revealer and the mediator of his will, and do not quench, suppress, or subdue the Holy Spirit. I think that we have to put all that together. I think if we're happy, we're glad-hearted, we're praying, we're thanking God in every circumstance, it just throws the door wide open for God to work full force in our lives. I think complaining, grumbling, fault finding is a much bigger problem than what we can ever imagine that it is. And I'm committed more than ever in my life to trying to do everything that I can to be thankful to God and to say so. And not only to God, but to other people. We need to tell the people in our life that we appreciate that we appreciate them. You know something I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for all the people that helped me do what God has called me to do. Dave and I sat this morning before we came over here and we were talking about just how amazing it is all the people that God gives to make something like this happen. You have no idea how many people it takes for you to be able to walk in here on a Sunday morning and plop your cute little bottom down and enjoy everything that's going on and then go on back out, get a Starbucks, have lunch and go home. I mean, it's amazing the amount of work that it takes and the dedicated volunteers. And what a shame it is if there are people who have the privilege of being in a place like this and you never bother to say thank you, but you're quick to complain when there's something that you don't like. That is one of the greatest tragedies that we have in our world today. And nothing shows how much we don't appreciate God any quicker than that. Amen? Well, I decided in preparation for this message, because I've known a while I was going to preach it, I decided that I was going to take about eight weeks and keep a list of things that happened to me that I wasn't planning for, wasn't expecting, that were inconvenient and irritating. And that when I got to the end of that list, that I could work it into my message. So here's some things that have happened to me over the last eight weeks. When I did this message last week, there were 33, and now I already have 37 <laughs> on the list. Got two just this morning. <laughs> First thing that happened to me when I started keeping this list was I injured my back at the gym. My water leaked out of my humidifier and bubbled the wood on my table. I broke a fingernail. <laughs> I twisted my wrist. I left some luggage on the plane. Nursing home called about my mom two times. Now, we take care of my mom, who's 89, and my aunt, who's 86. And they are sisters who have sibling rivalry. <laughs> Just amazing. <laughs> Just absolutely amazing. My aunt just went into the nursing home recently from her apartment. We, they were in assisted living apartments, and then when they no longer take care of themselves, they transfer over 
to the nursing home. And so they asked me at the nursing home when my aunt was transferring over, would, would you like us to put her in the room with your mother? I said, no. <laughs> that won't work. They were like, why not? I said, just trust me, it won't work. <laughs> you don't want to do that. And there's always something going on. And, you know, I love them. I'm going to take care of them until they're no longer here. But the problem is, is when people are depending on you like that, you never know when they're going to need something. And if you're the only one, then no matter what you want to do or don't want to do, you got to go take care of it. I don't care if I'm on the other side of the world and I get a call from the nursing home, I got to make sure that somebody does what needs to be done. So the nursing home called twice about some stuff with my mom. I spilled a red vitamin drink on a white couch. <laughs> Dave hit a golf ball through a window on the golf course. I had to spend some money I didn't plan to spend replacing a couch I didn't plan to replace. <laughs> All right, I hope you're ready for this. I got my toe caught in my underwear. <laughs> and I pulled the tendons in my toes, in my toe. I got it caught between my little toe and my next toe, and I fell this way, and my foot went that way, and my toe swelled up and got black and blue. When I showed it to my chiropractor, because I wanted to make sure it wasn't broken, he said, oh, I guess you stubbed it, huh? And I said, no, actually, I got it hung up in my underwear. He said, well, I have never heard of that in my whole life. You got to be talented to do that. I had to tell my very independent 86-year-old aunt that she couldn't drive her car anymore. That wasn't a fun today. <laughs> had to replace my mother's TV because she can't hear it without turning it on warp speed. And so <laughs> we had to get her one that she could have these little TV ears with so she wasn't driving everybody else bananas. I went to the spa, decided I wanted to get a massage. I was out of town. so. I went to the spa and this was a really, really nice hotel and I'd heard they had a really nice spa. so. I went there and got a nice massage and enjoyed it and came out, got my clothes out of the locker and went to a little changing room to change my clothes and I got all dressed and couldn't find my pants. <laughs> so I'm standing there thinking, what am I going to do? So I put this robe on, went back out to the locker, looked again, no pants. Looked around the thing, no pants. Somehow or another, I guess I didn't get my slacks in the locker and I left them in the floor and somebody picked them up and did something with them. So I'm here, I got to go home and I have no pants. So <laughs> I put the robe on, you got you to picture this, I put the robe on, I go upstairs in this very nice hotel to the desk where I had to check out and I said, I have a very unique problem. <laughs> now keep in mind, it's not like nobody knows me. It's not like, you know, just. So she said, can I help you? I said, I've lost my pants. <laughs> she said, you've lost your pants. <laughs> I said, they're not in my locker. She said, you mean somebody stole your pants? I said, no, I don't think anybody stole them. I had other stuff in there they would have wanted. I must have not got them in there. So she sends me down there with a clerk. And we looked through all the laundry. We looked through every locker in the place. I had no pants. I said, you are going to have to let me wear this robe home. It's the only way that I can get home. She said, well, I'll tell you what, you just keep it. You can have it as a memento. So then she said, wait a minute, I've got an idea. She said, we have a gift shop across the lobby over there. She said, you just go over there and, and I'll, they'll give you a pair of pants. And I'm thinking, okay, I've got to go through the lobby of this very fancy hotel in my robe, most of the people knowing who I am, go into the gift shop and say, could you give me a pair of pants? So here I go through the lobby of the hotel. I went into the gift shop and the lady said, they've already called me. <laughs> they gave me a pair of pants and I got home. I have had so much fun with this. Well, finally that afternoon, they called me about three and said, oh, you know, Mrs. Meyer, we found your pants. They were laying here on the desk the whole time and somebody had just covered them up with an appointment book. Now, you know what? I believe that God arranges these things for me just to have stories to tell you.
So here's what I want to say. If you think that God cannot use you, I am running a worldwide ministry. And I hurt my toe, getting it hung up in my underwear, and I lost my pants in the spa. If God can use me, God can use you. Amen? You know, I truly believe that the more we complain about a situation, the longer we will remain in it. If we want to see a breakthrough in our lives, then we need to start really being thankful and praising God and having an attitude of just real gratitude of what God is doing in our lives. Don't just look at what He hasn't done yet or what you don't have, but look at the positive what you do have and be grateful for that. That's something we all need to do.